What's up guys? It's another great day to be alive. Another great day to go fishing. Just got done baking up some dead rig heads back there. It's one of my favorite things to do is to make a piece of terminal tackle or to make a bait and go fishing with it. And so made some little 132nd ounce Ned rig heads to go fish a local creek that is like literally a mile and a half from my house. We're actually gonna go float it in the kayak. And now today's video isn't just a creek fishing mission. It isn't just a floating mission. Today's video is a video that I've been thinking about making for a while now. And what that video is, is a video to fish affordably and to fish locally. Because I don't know about you guys, but if you haven't noticed, things have just got way more expensive. Whether it's gas, groceries, whatever it is, this life expenses have got more expensive over the past year to year and a half and things have just gone out the roof but there are so many little bodies of water so close to my house that I've never fished that I can literally be at in just a couple of minutes and burn the most minimal amount of gas possible, use the most minimal amount of equipment to go fishing but still go explore a brand new place and have a ton of fun and so this is the first video in a series of videos that I'm planning on making where I'm fishing locally and I'm fishing affordably just to give you guys some ideas of what you guys can go do as well as hopefully discover some new places near me to go fishing that is just easy to access, it's affordable to get there, and it's easy to go catch fish. And so, I don't know, it's just a video I've been thinking about. Go leave me a comment down below if this resonates with you because I know for me, you know, life has got more expensive and so why not find ways to help save money while doing the things that we love like fishing without further ado i'm gonna shut up we're gonna get the kayak loaded and we're gonna go fish this creek and see what we can get done Oh my God. Yep, that's a musky. That's a musky. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? It's not a joke. Okay. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? Okay, 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 okay. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh my God. Literally third cast, guys. Guys, that just came out of a creek. This tiny little creek, it's like four foot deep right here. Look at that. That is freaking crazy. That's a muskie. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, okay. I just dropped him in the water, but you guys just saw that. I, uh, um, look at this. Okay, I just caught a muskie on a buzz bait in a tiny little creek. I mean, it is like two foot deep right here, and I just caught a muskie on a buzz bait in this tiny little creek. He absolutely demolished that thing. Look at me shaking. <laughs> oh, guys, that is the coolest thing ever. Those toothy critters are actually in here. That's freaking crazy. All right, then. Well, 
We're gonna keep on fishing then. Hey, buzz bait. I mean, like, that thing hit that buzz bait so hard. Oh my God, I've got another one. I got another one. Oh, he just came off. He's got it. He's got it again. Oh my gosh, it's another one. This is freaking nuts. Oh my gosh. It's another one. Holy cow. I need a net. <laughs> oh my gosh, get up in the kayak. Are you freaking kidding me? Here, musky. I'm so sorry, buddy. Let me get you undone here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I just caught another one. That is, that's, that's two muskies in four casts. Are you kidding me? I am shaking like a leaf. <sighs> guys, guys, look at this. Look at this. It's a freaking another one. <laughs> look at this, guys. I'm on the phone with Bethany right now. Guys, I am shaking all over. Look at me shaking. They're not big muskies, but there's mu they're, they're loaded in here. Are you kidding me? He just cut the tail right off my swim bait. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. Get back. Get back. Oh my gosh. I am. I am. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't even function right now. That's two muskies in six casts, guys. Look at this. And he just, he just cut the tail right off the end of my swim bait. Oh my gosh. He's like another 25 incher. <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever. I've been here for all of about maybe 10 minutes now. I've got two muskies in six casts on top water. I always said I wanted to catch a muskie on top water. And I always said I wanted to catch a muskie out of a kayak. So I've knocked out a muskie in a kayak and a muskie on top water about three minutes from my house in six casts. I'm, sh I'm literally shook right now. I'm, I, am sh I am shaking. I'm so freaked out by this. <sighs> Lord of mercy. What do I got here? A little small mouth. Come here, buddy. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Look at this, guys. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Stop it, stop, stop. Look at this, guys. This is a little bitty small mouth. It's just a little bitty small mouth. So if there's a little small mouth, it means there's big small mouth. Oh, I am, I am. Look at this school of suckers right here. Wow. Look at this, guys. This school of suckers swimming by. Look at that. There is so much life in this creek. That is insane, the amount of life that is in this creek. Well, guys, here's my first roadblock on the way up. Now, here's the deal, though. I've got plenty of time to fish this creek because of how close it is actually to where I live. So I can come back. I, the Like the wanting to search and see what's going on wants me to go up that direction as, as bad as I possibly can. But... I think right now, the best course to action is to work back down the direction that we went and keep going downstream to the takeout point, which I told Bethany to come pick me up at because we did a hot drop today, uh, meaning that I literally just like threw the kayak off the side of the road and, you know, the the road itself is public, the bridge is public, and the you know land around that bridge is public, but I still had to just like get out because there was nowhere to park and, and just drop this kayak in, but... I have been here for no more than 45 minutes. And I have seen largemouth, smallmouth, suckers, creek chubs, catfish, bluegill, muskies. I mean, this, this has to be one of the most biodiverse creeks that I have fished in this year. And I am absolutely amazed that these fish are here and that they're living in this creek. I mean, this is just probably one of the most fascinating things that I've ever experienced. And I can only imagine what more lives in this creek. I mean, if, if a 25 inch muskie can live in here, then a 45 or 50 inch muskie can live in here. And if a 50 inch muskie can live in here, a freaking eight pound largemouth can live in here. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just amazed right now that, that, 
there, there's this much going on in this creek. I mean, like, I, I'm sure you guys can tell I'm a little blown away. So, yeah, we're going to keep fishing. We're going to start heading back downstream now. I'm going to start the uh, float portion of, uh, of this float and see what else we can get in the boat today. I mean, this is insanity. That's a large mouth. Yep. Where are you? Get up in here. <laughs> what a chunk. Oh, there's another one right there with it. Look at this, guys. Look at this. There's another one right here with it. I'm going to try to catch him. So, so far today, guys, I've caught a large mouth, a small mouth, and two muskies. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane that there's this much life living in this creek. I mean, because this is a creek. This is not a river. I mean, this literally, the name of this is, is Blank Creek. And so it is a creek. I mean, it is an average depth of two and a half, three feet at the most. Really average depth probably a foot but in this creek there's that much life and i mean that large mouth is a freaking good one there we go another large mouth my god they eat that thing hard lord have mercy fish God, that is fun. Get out of here, dude. Lord have mercy. What a bite. Golly. This poor buzz bait. I've got it all bent to crap. I mean, I don't even know how this thing's still working. Got him. That was freaking awesome. He tried to pull that thing under. And I let it sink down there and smashed it. That's awesome. That's a spotted bass. <laughs> okay. So I've caught a large mouth, a spot, a small mouth, and two muskies. <laughs> what even is this? Oh, this is not real life. This is not real life. This is just freaking awesome. Oh, like, <laughs> there you go, guys. There you go, guys. Look at that. Man, that's awesome. Oh, what a bite. That's awesome. Whew, that's so cool. I mean, that is just... Gosh, this is so cool. This is just ridiculously cool. <sighs> I mean, I can't explain to you guys, like, the excitement. <laughs> oh, man. Guys, I, I can't explain to you the amount of excitement that stuff like this brings me because I've said this before, and if you listen to the podcast, you know, watch my videos, I cut my teeth as a kid with nature by going to creeks and flipping rocks, and in particular the creek right behind my house. You know, I grew up on a creek. I was lucky enough to grow up on some property with a creek that ran through it and man we'd go down there and we'd catch crawdads and we'd catch creek chubs and you'd catch all these little critters and you know when it came to bass fishing i think that was the same draw for me with bass fishing is is, is go where no one else has gone go catch things no one else has caught and you know in the boat i could do that to an extent and then i got an aluminum boat and i could do that to an extent more and then i discovered the kayak and 
you know, I went in one direction with the kayak, which was Hobie PA-14, and now I've kind of simplified back down to a more simple version of the kayak, just so that I can itch that itch that I have, you know, to try to go places that no one else has gone, catch things that no one else has caught, and just explore. And this literally, to me, is like, this is what gets me up out of bed in the morning, and this is what I've always wanted to do was go explore like this and just have days where I can come out here and I can figure these fish out and catch these bass living in these creeks but man guys this is fun this is just so so much fun <laughs> oh god that is so stupid fun oh god that's just freaking ridiculous jeez well i gotta get over that that is a big old pile that is a big log jam and that is keeping me from going where i need to go and it's looking like the takeout is literally just right over this hill right over the next bend and so looking like the only way that i'm going to get through that is to go straight over the top of it so i'm gonna have to figure that out um looking like my feet's gonna have to get wet because i am wearing the extra tufts today and so yeah looking like i'm gonna have to get a little bit wet but hey you know gotta risk it for the biscuit ladies and gentlemen gotta risk it for the biscuit oh that sinks Well, I may have just got my shoes wet for no reason. But you know what? It's all right. I think what we're gonna have to do is drag it by land, boys. Let's leave the stupid water around my shoes. Well, guys, I'm, I'm making it to like the last third of this little trip here, this little adventure that I've been on. And it has transitioned from muskies and largemouth to solely spotted bass, which is very interesting. I mean, spots, whether they be Kentuckys or Coosa Rivers, are very prolific, you know, animals. And they're very prolific in creeks as well. I mean, you know, that's a very, uh, I mean, that, 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 fish is designed to live in a small body of water like this but i just find it interesting it makes me think um there's another area 
that I can put in and take out, or attempt to at least, uh, on up above where I put in, which makes me think that I could get into some more largemouth and muskies and less of the spotted bass. But I mean, it is completely transitioned now to just spotted bass, which is very, very interesting. But I mean, this is just absolutely beautiful, guys. I mean, look at this creek, you know, look at the way that it's set up. You know, this is who would have ever known that the biodiversity and just the diversity of fish and the quality of fish and everything would have been living in here like it is i mean i am i'm just blown away by this it's been an amazing trip so yeah we're getting down here at the end though we got a little while longer we had to drag over that one log jam obviously filled the old boots up with uh with water so glad i was wearing the boots the water isn't too cold but Kind of wish I had my Chacos on. It's been a uh, very hot fall, if you can't tell. I mean, it is the first week of November, so don't think I'm sneaking this video in on you, you know, after, like, the season or something. I mean, this is first week of November in the south, and it is very, very hot outside. But, yeah, we're going to keep on going here. Hopefully we run into one more musky. That'd be all right with me. Those muskies are, uh, they hit a top water just a little bit hard. Just a little bit. How'd you like that little move? Oh, guys, did you see that? That was awesome. <laughs> that was cool. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. What a beautiful, awesome creature. I mean, there's not big ones, but man, they hammer it when they decide to hammer it, man. That is awesome. Get out here, bud. Thank you, man. <laughs> you know, it's funny, guys. It seems like I hit like a spot where they live at. You know, there's like a there's like a spot that they all like there's two or three in one spot which is interesting to me makes me i mean i don't know what to think about it but it's just interesting to me Well guys, here we are, a brand new creek that I have never 
fish before. Did a little hot drop this morning, had Bethany drop me off. And I've got an area down here that hopefully she can pick me up at. I kind of just explored this place on Google Earth more than anything. Didn't look like there was a whole lot of log drams and obstructions. This eventually leads out to the lake. And uh, this is a creek that, like I said, I've never fished before. I've not even fished it from the boat, like down on the lake end of it. This is just something brand new to me. And uh, we're going to see what we can get done. It's, it's pretty shallow so far. It looks like it deepens up as we go on down through here. Um, but I brought a coal shad with me and then I brought a finesse rod with me that I can throw a weightless general on and those are going to kind of be the two things that I'm going to be tossing around today. It's looking like I probably should have brought something a little bit smaller but hey it is what it is and we're going to we're going to deal with it as is but we're going to have some fun today. I love exploring a brand new creek that I've never been to and this is as brand new as it gets. I am totally uh I have no idea what I'm about to get into today, and hopefully we get into something really crazy and really fun. Maybe some muskies, maybe some bass. I have no idea. We just got to get out here, explore, and figure it out. guys as you can see we've got this big man-made pipe system here and um, I think that honestly is kind of what's been hurting us as far as catching bass so from here on down there's no man-made obstructions anywhere and so I'm hoping with that being the fact that it's allowed these bass to navigate up this creek out of the main lake and that we'll have a population of bass living up here that wants to eat stuff and so yeah that's our last big obstacle it looks like i mean from what i can tell on google earth it's pretty open creek all the way down through here which is helping i mean it's it's making this little float go by pretty quick we've only been out here about an hour and a half and already got the first half of the float done and so this is a quick float and uh, i think again those man-made obstructions are what were keeping us from being able to catch as many fish so still bass i mean we still saw some which fascinates me makes you wonder how they got there but yeah we're gonna keep on there we go there we go there we go man that's fun what i say get past those man-made obstructions start catching some freaking fatties on the coal shed oh that's fun look at the freaking belly on that one guys that's awesome. Look at him. He's like almost deformed. He's so fat. That's awesome. Such a pretty fish. Thanks, bud. And so there you go, guys. Just like I was saying, I think if we get past those man-made obstructions that our chances of catching fish are going to start going up because it allows these fish to navigate this creek and not have to worry about giant concrete structures separating them from being able to uh, get where they want to go. So fish number one of the day finally in the boat we've seen a few spots but nothing bit but that one definitely did and that was a ton of fun God dang, that's a giant. That is a giant. Golly, I ate that thing right off the top of the water. Oh God, that's fun. He's not even that big. He's just mean as can be. Oh yeah. Yep. I would, next time I do this float, I'm not gonna do that upper half. Yeah. Yeah, it's deeper and it just is easier to get in and out of. 
you there, guys. That's fun. On the phone with Bethany. She's my lucky charm. Her, her and dad are my lucky charms. Another one on the coal shad. That's funny. It's little, the little creek fish on the coal shad is hilarious to me. Get out here, bud. Thanks, man. Well, guys, fish number two on the coal shad. That is a fun bite. It gets the big ones to eat, too. You don't have any little pecker fish, and little bluegills, and then little spots trying to eat that thing. If there's a big fish in the area, it is going to crank it, and that's what that fish just did, and that was a ton of fun. But, yeah, we're going to keep on going here. Like I said, I think those man-made obstacles, those big concrete I don't know, water pass through thing i don't even know what you would call that it's just like a giant culvert system um was keeping a lot of these fish from getting up there and so now that we're down here in this lower end of this float and in this creek i think we're going to start running into a lot more fish that are more willing to eat and so you just got to keep going uh, you know it's funny like i love doing these creek floats but this time of year they can be kind of tough um, mainly because you just run into a lot of fish that aren't really apt to eat and it's because this water is so much cooler than you know like on the main lake main lake right now it's like 65 almost 70 degrees and you got a lot of fish spawning getting ready to spawn those kinds of things up in these creeks i mean you're dealing with fish that are still pre-spawn and it's funny that when they go post-spawn they get so much more aggressive and so that's why like that late summer fall bite in these creeks is so awesome but you know coming out here and exploring and kind of getting a feel for what it's going to be like in the fall i think is super important and so i like that this second half of this float so far i think this is going to be the kind of easier one to access and to get into and to actually catch fish and so yeah we're going to keep exploring see how many more fish we can catch and just that's kind of what the day's mission is is just an exploratory mission to figure out exactly what lives here and what we can catch and hopefully come back to it and and do better in the fall gopro stop recording hey there bud what are you doing Well, we have a friend. We have a cow friend. I've never passed a cow in the water. I don't know how this is gonna go. Hey, man. He's a cow. Can't, yeah, I guess he could hurt me. I don't know. I don't think he's gonna hurt me. Hey, bud. Yep, there we go. Going out the water there. I ain't gonna hurt you. I ain't gonna hurt you. He said, I don't know that. Hey there, bud. Another one. That's a large mouth. <laughs> That's fun, man. A little large mouth action there. I was wondering if we were going to run into any large mouth today. Just because we're getting closer to the lake. And uh, that's what's going to live in the lake way more than lives up in these creeks. A little large mouth there on the coal shot again. Thanks, bud. Well, it's fish number three. Thanks, bud. You're good luck. It's funny. I guess the bass uh, don't mind if cows are in the water with them. Interesting. It's that black cow bite. Whoa. I've always been worried that a bull, like I come across a bull. There's a lot of these creeks like, you know, farmers use for water sources for their cattle and stuff. And I'm always scared that I'm gonna be going down through here and like run into some big old pissed off bull and him try to get me. Which I don't know. Man, how how efficient is a large cow in the water? I don't know if a water buffalo or anything like that. I mean, I just wonder. Weird, weird. Uh, I have a couple weird. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just like totally, they don't make any sense. Like irrational fears. The first one is that a tree is going to follow me while I'm fishing. That's my first one. Um, and then, like, the second one is, like, a really, like, just strange interaction with an animal. You know, I mean, I've had a dog jump in my boat before. So, that's the difference between a dog and a cow, I guess. I don't know. Let's plan here, bud. 
I just don't want to get in between you and the bank. Come on. Move on now. See, this is that irrational fear coming true. I got to come through there. Yeah. I got to come through. Go. Go. There you go. Get over that way. You're pretty cow, though. There we go. They can move pretty good. Guys, check this out. I think it's just a rock. But that side right there makes me think it was an early working of an arrowhead. This side, no, but that side looks like it's been worked. I'll stick that in our pocket. That's pretty cool. I don't know. That may just be just a normal old rock, but interesting. Yeah. I'm surprised there ain't no uh, muskies in here. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. I'm, I kept saying I'm going to throw in one of these trees. There we go. There's another one. There we go. Oh, large mouth. Hey there. There we go. Caught another one. Oh, good luck charms on the phone, boys and girls. Dad, Tony, he's the good luck charm. Lord of mercy, that that fish wrapped that freaking coal shad. It looks like a it looks like a a piece of calamari. That's funny. It's a little dinker, a little thirteen incher. That's funny. Let's see how long that fish is actually. Let's see, he is ah, fourteen inches. Oh Lord, calm down, fish. Golly. Okay, get out of here, crazy. That was fun. All right, guys, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is the soon to be released berkeley coal shad i have to say i've not seen as much hype around a bait as i have around the coal shad in a long time and honestly the hop should be there because this is a phenomenal bait with a lot of great features that i think is going to make it just the choice for a harness swim bait the biggest thing being is it doesn't have a speed at which i have to reel it a mag draft was synonymous, and I and I noted this myself back in the day. Well, I think I reviewed a mag draft like eight years ago. Was that there's a certain speed that it likes to be reeled at. You reel it too fast, and it rolls. You reel it too slow, and it doesn't have any action. This bait, on the other hand, I can burn it. I can slow roll it. I can reel it at a moderate pace. I can do all kinds of different things with it, with zero modification and get it to do all the things that i want it to do and in situations like where i'm fishing today with current that's huge because i there's situations where i want to have to reel it fast there's situations where i've got to reel it slow and so i have to have a bunch of different reel speeds that i can reel it at because i still want to be able to get the action out of it and get the fish to eat it and this bait allows me to do that and a lot of that has to do with the design it's got that honeycomb tail on there and so what that allows is allows berkeley to use a harder plastic while still having all that action because that honeycomb tail allows that tail to do what it needs to do and i mean um i am loving this bait so far as you guys have seen it has been awesome in these small creeks here lately and i really think that that's a whole nother deal with today is this thing is doing a perfect job of mimicking what these fish are eating there are tons and tons of thread fins swimming around in these creeks i mean i have seen big big schools of thread fin shad that literally look just like that call shad nearly the same size as well and so these big dominant predatory fish are coming up and they're smoking this thing because it looks like 
what they're eating on and you know we're gonna have the hd patterns in these we're gonna have some uh, solid pour patterns as well there's gonna be an eight inch size i mean i just can't wait for you guys to get your hands on this thing because if you love fishing current like i do if you love being able to have a swim bait that you can do a bunch of different things with fish it shallow fish it deep fish it fast fish it slow this is going to be the swim bait for you because another thing that's awesome about it is it has these two holes on the bottom and those two holes are designed to put weights inside of and so you can take this bait and turn it into a bait that like what i'm using it for today in inches of water feet of water and turn it into a bait that you can fish in deeper water you know eight ten foot of water without having to tear up the soft plastic on that bait or to have to you know glue that thing back together when those nico weights finally tear out the bottom of that bait these designated holes allow you to put weights in there without tearing the bait up and so i'm excited guys it's an awesome bait i think you guys are going to love it when it comes out it, like i said again june 19th it's going to hit the market as soon as it does i will let you guys know obviously i'll post it up on social i'll post it up on community tab i'll obviously have some videos dropping about it around release as well so that you guys can pick yourselves up some coal shad but that's the bait for today and then i'm throwing it on a seven six medium heavy elite bass fenwick rod a six eight gear ratio revo stx and then some 17 pound straight fluoro and that has been the deadly combination not only today but a couple other days as well i've been to a couple other creeks just kind of scouting and seeing what's going to fish well this year and, and what might not and i've had the biggest fish in the area come after this cold shad which is just it's freaking fun is what it is so yeah that's the bait for today i knew it would kind of be the elephant in the room the one thing that everybody would want to know about and uh i can understand why because it is going to be an awesome swim bait when you guys finally get your hands on it That's fun. Oh, that is fun. Whew. Look at the freaking bellies on these fish, man. These are just pre-spawn fatties. Eating that coal shad too. You know, bait's actually doing a really, really good job of mimicking the bait that these fish are eating. There are so many threadfin shad in here and they are all about that size and literally look just like that bait. And so, these bigger than average fish, these big predatory fish in here are having to eat these bigger meals because that's just what sustains their existence. And I think a lot of them like are pre-spawn, like I said, which is just, oh my gosh, man, what a freaking, whew. hopefully you guys saw that. That was an amazing bite. Just absolutely amazing bite. man dead jimmy Well, that's the first one I've missed today. Well, I mean, hooked and missed. I, I had a couple other ones earlier in the video, obviously, that kind of slipped by me. But that's the first one that they got off. That's weird. I don't know, I don't know why they do that. I don't know how they hit something that hard and then somehow don't get hooked. It's the strangest freaking thing.
Well, we got the big boots out today, the tall boots. I wore my short boots on the last creek fishing mission that we went on and ended up filling them full of water because I had to get out and pull the kayak over some stuff that was just a little too deep. And so we're going knee highs today to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I'm probably going to go invest in myself a pair of good waders so that I can go do these creek fishing missions and not have to worry about getting in water really up to my chest. But today we're going on creek fishing mission number two. So again, this is a series of videos that I'm going out and I'm fishing locally and I'm fishing affordably. I got the kayak loaded up, I got two rods, two reels, a bag full of baits, and we're going to fish places that were like really close to the house. This place we're going today is within, I think like four or five minutes of the house. It's another creek that I've never fished before, but I've drove by a thousand times and just thought, I need to go fish that. And so this series of videos is just a way to kind of look at fishing in a different way, in an affordable way, and in a fun way, and in a local way, because I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed things have got a little bit more expensive, whether it's gas groceries, whatever it is, things are just more expensive. And I just wanna show that you can still go have fun and do the things that you love, like fishing, but in a very affordable and local way. And so that's what we're going to do today. I'm glad you clicked on this video. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this. And without further ado, I'm gonna shut up. We're gonna get the kayak down the creek and we'll see what we can get done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, here we are. We have made it to the creek. Again, very close to my house. I really don't know anything about it other than its proximity to my house. I mean, I've drove by this creek thousands of times in my life and have never stopped here and never fished. But I have heard rumor that there are fish in here and that they're, uh, they're willing to eat. And so, we're gonna fish today and we're gonna see what we can get done. I'm gonna start with the buzz bait again today. The other creek fish uh, ate it like they had never seen anything quite like it. And honestly, I don't think they ever had. And so I think that's what makes the buzz bait as effective as it is, is the fact that they just never seen anything quite like that. And they eat it with total disregard because it's something brand new to them. But yeah, we're gonna get after it. We're gonna see what we can get done. I already seeing some bait fish. So that is a good sign. That means there's food. And if there's food, it normally means there's predatory fish that want to eat that food. So yeah, I'm excited about this one. It's a little bit shallower, a little bit clearer. Not as much cover as the other creek, but that don't mean anything. It does not mean anything. All right, guys. Well, here's obstacle number one, and we're not even 100 feet into this thing. That's a freaking big one, too. I mean, that's just a damn mess, is all that is. Looks like two different trees have fallen over each other. So, uh... Yeah. I got to figure this one out. I'm not too sure. I guess I'll just have to go get out right there. I guess go straight up. Yes. Hey. Hey, this is a cluster. Well, it looks like it opens up pretty good right down there. I can't tell how many jams are though. Yeah, it looks like there's jams at a freaking 10 feet. That's gonna be a hell of a drag for the old kayak, but be yeah. high. Oh no, it's pretty open down through there. All right. Huh? Alright, I'll 
Okay, we're in. Hi. There it was. Followed it right to the right up there. I followed it again. There he is. There he was. Ha <laughs> ha! There he is. I got him at Tom. <laughs> Thing hit a freaking spinnerbait three times. I finally got my net rig. Another spotted bass. But who knew that the creeks around me were so full of Kentucky spotted bass? It's awesome. All right, there's fish number one of the trip. Get out here, bud. Well guys, I threw the buzz bait in there three times, had three different blow ups, and uh, finally threw the old net rig down in there. And got another one, they're stacked up right here. Heck yeah. Little bitty, but fun. Heck yeah, that's probably why they weren't getting that buzz bait. This little. All right, guys. Well, log jam number three for the trip. This one is, uh, this trip's a little tough just because of all the junk piled up in here. I think it's just where this creek is so tight. It kind of lends itself to stuff piling up. So, uh, on the back side of the last log jam, though, we caught two fish, three fish, two fish and uh, had several bites so we're going to pull over this one dump back down in and then uh, fish the back side of this one so this camera has stopped working i don't really know why so you're on this camera for right now until i can get this thing to start working <laughs> getting annoying Nope. 
Heck yeah. <laughs> there you go, guys. What a bite. I kind of figured there'd be one sitting down along that, a little bit deeper here. That's where these fish are going to want to live. Heck yeah. Yeah, here, buddy. Thank you, man. That's because what you got to realize is. Where are you? Hey there, buddy. Little. Hey, buddy. Little man. Oh, man. He stroked that freaking buzz bait. There we go. He's a little dude, but he's a good one. Good man. There you go. Awesome sauce. Get out of here, buddy. Thank you. What are you doing? Yeah, that's what I'll do later. That's what I'll do later. I'll show you how it works. I'll show you how it works. It's actually really nice. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We are back at it again this week. I think we're gonna make this a weekly thing. We're definitely gonna try to make it a weekly thing where I go fishing with John and Josh and we pick a random river in the middle of the mountains and we go try to fish it without dying. And so this week, John picked the river. Next week, Josh will have to pick the river, but John picked the river this week and he says it's definitely not like what we got into last week with all the rapids and me flipping my kayak if you've not watched that video i'll make sure to link it below you can go check it out but we're about to get after I didn't it guarantee no i didn't guarantee no flips before we get started no, i didn't guarantee that but this river is different and it's very unique to tennessee and it's my favorite river so so you're saying you're gonna flip today i i, I flipped this is the only time only river i've ever flipped in the first time i ever kayaked <laughs> that, 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 so. oh. Now now the, now the truth, truth comes, comes out. out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to send it. We're about to see what's going to happen. I'm kind of scared to be totally honest with you, but it'll be fun. Golly, there's got to be one right here, right? Mm hmm. There you go, buddy. Get him, bud. Biggin'? Nice. Like real, real big? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm just going to throw. Good job, man. Dang, don't, dude. That's a good one. There's probably more. Come over here. Well, there's definitely more. I saw him with it. I'm going three, three, eight. Three, three, five. Three, three, five. Three, three, five. So that's a, I don't know what mouth that is, but yeah. Got it. There it is. Look at that. Look at the size of fish. Dude, oh, that's a, that's a kusa or a little red eye. That ain't a, a, a spot, John. Yeah. Huh, that's crazy. All right, guys, so I've caught 
two or three of these already this morning, but this is neither a spotted bass, a largemouth, or a smallmouth. This is a completely different breed of bass. And, you know, I've heard them called Kusa uh, bass. I've heard them called red eye bass. I've heard them called a bunch of different things, but you can tell by that pinky kind of red on his tail and just the color and markings on this fish. But that is a brand new species to add to the list of fish right there. Absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous little fish. And what's so funny is that thing ate the Nessie. Ate a seven inch Nessie. So, awesome. That was fun. Josh, I'm coming up on the fast, bud. <laughs> sure, that was pretty good. They both followed that out. Oh, one of them little Kusa bass. Got, got that red tail. tail. Got this. Just such a, a pretty little fish. I mean, as can be too. Aggressive. Awesome. Thanks, bud. What do you think, John? Yeah. I got uh, I got some money to stack some money in there. I have I got one o'clock. One o'clock already. Damn. Damn. Yeah, that's close to eyes. I think I got that one out. I can feel this one in there somewhere. Yeah. But uh I'm gonna take a break at one o'clock. It's been a little tougher than I was expecting. I thought he was talking to me. And uh can I do my video? <laughs> Not being interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> you think they know? Well, boys and girls, we've been at it for about four hours now. Josh has caught him a big one. I've caught a bunch of little ones. John's caught him a couple little ones. I'm sitting there eating a pack of crackers and a uh, chocolate chip chewy bar from the Aldi. Aldi, if you're watching, give me a call. And uh, yeah, that's about it. We're going to keep on doing this thing. We're going to keep on seeing if we can catch some fish. And I don't know about you guys, Josh and John, but this is probably one of the more prettier places we've ever fished. I love this place. It's, it's, it's hard to top it. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Good 
dude. Oh my gosh, look at this crawdad he's got in his throat. Holy cow. Dude, this thing looks like a lobster. <laughs> that is awesome. Golly. Hold on just a dead gym second. Check that one out. Best one of the day for me so far. I have to show you this though. I don't know if you can see it, but look at the crawdad pincher in the back of that thing's throat. That dude is eating big meals. Just ate the Nessie. That was awesome. Let's get him back in the water. All right, buddy. You tell me when you're ready. Yep. There you go. Hi. Right. <laughs> John, find us a path three, bud. Because my path three didn't work. Oh, yee yee. John's got one. That's one. I love that they eat. I mean, dude, look at that in the size of bait that it just ate. And the aggression level is amazing. It's just crazy to me, guys. Look at this. It just doesn't even make any sense. He's the damn cleanup man, dude. There we go. Oh, yep. That was fun. Whew. Heck yeah. I didn't know he'd be there. Oh, look at that. Man, that's awesome. Those fish are angry heck yeah oh that's fun <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting down to the end of this thing. We've got about a quarter of the float left to do. So we've done about three quarters of the float. We've got a quarter left to do. 
has been a long float today. I didn't say this at the beginning of the video, but this is a 10 mile float. And so, yeah, it's a good long one to say the least. Um, it's been a good day though. We've had some fun, caught some fish. It's just exhausting. And the thing is, I'm going to fish a kayak tournament tomorrow. So not only am I gonna be good and exhausted today, but I have a feeling I'm going to be good and exhausted tomorrow as well. But we're going to get after it. Um, it's always fun to come out here. We're actually talking about where we're going next week. And so, yeah, we're going to continue this little series of floating and going and hopefully finding some better spots to go catch some fish and just keep the train rolling here, folks. But we got a little ways to go here. Still plenty of chances to catch some big fish. Um, this place holds some true freak giants, and uh, I think that if I'm going to get a freak giant to mess up, I can get them to mess up on the nest. So, heck yeah. Sound you let out. I know. Dude, scared the fuck. <laughs> he said, oh. oh god, that's funny. There we go. That's a big one. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh-huh. Gotta make sure I got it. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh josh i'm gonna need to borrow them pliers from you bud they ain't gone son he he donkey stomped that thing yeah buddy heck yeah guys look at that i think he wanted it jeez thank you Thank you, thank you. Don't lean too much. There we go. That's what I was talking about. You hate that thing. There you go, guys. Check that one out. Absolutely beautiful fish. Josh, you get my picture with this one, buddy? Oh, hell. There he went. Never mind. He's gone. Did he get away? Yeah, he, I, he's swimming right there. That's all right. That's all right. Well, folks, at least it ain't raining. his own out what up so the question is are we gonna catch him we better catch him we, be we, we better we we, we got it we've done several of these trips i mean we've had fun we've caught fish but i'm expecting one of those days where we just like have a blast and really wreck them so Finally that's what i'm get on them because yeah, exactly. we have that's the thing is we've gone on a lot of trips and we've caught fish yes but we need one of those days where it's like every one of them's a good one and we just really Get on them good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we can do it. I think we'll go. Hell yeah, boy. Go catch us some damn fish. Fish. Hell 
Oh yeah, that water's cold, buddy. Hell yeah. I'm excited. Catch some fish, gonna have a good time. Gonna be great. Golly guys, there are right in this little section right here. There's four or five that are five pounds or better setting. I pulled them out with that Nessie. God, that's crazy. It's just ridiculous the size of fish that live here. The thing is, if you could just get them to eat and eat good, I mean like, it would just be. Josh, Josh, big and bud. Oh my God. Josh, Josh, the biggest spot of my life. Oh my God. Dude, I think I just caught the state record. Josh, that's, dude, we're gonna have to call somebody. I think I just caught the state record. Really? Dude, we're gonna have to call somebody. Oh my God. Did you bring a scale? No. Dude, we need a scale. This is a freaking... Oh my God. I don't know how big that is. It's bigger than five. It may be a seven. I don't... I mean, dude, 25 inches? You tell me. You tell me. Oh my God, dude. I'm shaking like a leaf. No, I just left in the truck. Dude, we need, I need a scale. Dude, that fish is 22 and a quarter. Dude, that is the biggest spot I've ever seen in my life. You got your net? Yeah, I do got my net. Do you okay. Your net you, no. Okay, hold on. Let me put this thing in a net, dude. Get a scale. Show that to my camera. Oh, let me get her in the water for a minute. Oh, dang. I mean, dude, it doesn't even fit in your net. I'm trying to, I'm trying to just guesstimate how big she is. I can't tell, dude. You can't tell, man. It's deceiving. I mean, dude, she's so heavy. That fish is long, but it's like. I mean, thank you, sir. This, this ain't much of a thing. No, it, I mean, it's it, not. It, it but gives you a rough idea. Yeah, it gives me a rough idea. We can say six. We can say six. That's what do you think, dude? You think you should drive and get a scale, or you think we should just go with that? Well, my my scale is just. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't, I don't know. Reason. So, it's not the state record. The state record is a 6.15. It's a seven pounder. But it's definitely the biggest spotted bass I've ever caught in my life. At six pounds. So, we're going to put her back. We're going to get her going here. We've held her for a long time. And she's probably ready to get back and keep doing her thing. But, one of the most amazing fish I've ever had the pleasure of catching. So, there she goes. God, like, I know, right? <laughs> Y'all have a great day. Thank you again so much. All right, guys. Lord have mercy. What a way to start the day. Um, I, 
that was crazy. I, I really wish that fish would have been, I wish I'd have hit seen a seven on that scale that that, that man had and it would have really convinced me that I needed to go get one at the Walmart. Um, but the nearest Walmart's about 45 minutes away. Um, well, 50 minutes away round trip and I just didn't want to have to send Josh to, to go and do that unless it really, like unless I saw something on that, that gentleman's scale that really showed me that hey, this is maybe a true blue seven pounder because seven pounds is the state record. Um, but I just caught a six pound spotted bass. That was one of the most insane things that I've ever done in my whole entire life. I mean, he ate that that buzz bait, took me into that tree. I mean, that was just out of bounds. One of the coolest things I've ever done. So yeah, guys, that's how we start the morning. We hook about an 18 incher and then uh, we round her out with a six and a half pound or a six pound 22 and a quarter inch Alabama spotted bass. So, dang. All right, guys, I'm gonna switch up buzz baits real quick. Now, I know what you're saying, Alex, you're smoking dope because you just caught a freaking giant on that buzz bait. But I'm thinking about switching up to one with just a skirt on it because I don't think they're all gonna be six pounds today. I think they might want something a little more subtle, maybe just a skirt. Because I've had Sarah's like that bigger one I caught even this morning before I hooked that six pounder. He got it, but he didn't get it good. And it's just because their mouths, until they get giant, their mouths aren't that big. I think they have a hard time getting crop in their mouth. It's just crazy to me, dude. That big one ate like that, and now we can't can't get these littler ones to eat. Something weird, dude. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's where they live, dude. They love that shit. Here's one. There's a big one. Yeah, that's a good one right there, dude. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep, you just gotta find the freaking one that wants it. Get this up out of this tree here. Yep. Low quality one. Ain't a giant giant, but he's quality. Heck yeah, dude, that's the fun size right there. Yeah, that little switch up on that buzz bait there, see? I knew, yeah, there's just something, they love that little subtle, like, and, that, and not that that other one ain't subtle, it's just it ain't subtle like this one is, you know what I mean? I like the way this looks. Oh, come on. Come on. That'll look. I don't need you to play with it. I need you to put it in your damn mouth. Out in her mouth and the damn kids walked in. There we go. Little. Now, uh, he's growing. He's growing. God, just hit myself right in the damn, about damn near in the face with it. Oh, yeah. He wasn't going nowhere. Bait fish eating little mug, man. He got some sharp little pads. Heck yeah. You know. 15 and three quarter. <laughs> yeah, dude. That is crazy, man. That's why them spots are great in kayak tournaments, man. They got the length on them. That's funny. Heck yeah. This is, you know, talking to him about it. And punching a frog and all that. Golly. Another big one. 
Okay, and I'm in a tree. Stay hook, buddy. Okay. All right, yep, yep. We're in a genuine cluster right here. And he's not even that big. Shoo. Hold on. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Look at you. You just sit down, Jim Cute. I can't even stand it. Heck yeah. There's another little chunky one. God, these fish are so healthy, guys. There you go, guys. Thanks, bud. I'm going to fish on this bluff if you don't mind. <laughs> so I bet you do, bud. Bet you do. There we go. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you got it. Lord have mercy. Calm yourself. Calm yourself. There you go. There's a little one. Heck yeah. Thanks, bud. Oh. Yeah, we'll be like, we'll be the river. Like, this, we'll this time. That ought to be a bite. Slow it down a little bit. There he was. Told you. I told you, buddy. Hell far. I mean, coached you right through that one, buddy. <laughs> I'll let John be coach. I'll be assistant coach. How about that? I just saw that one. That's a good one too. Yep. That's awesome. Oh, get out of that tree. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> Listen, buddy. Some, some, some people's got big ones. Some people don't. All right? <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's, yeah. That was awesome. Heck yeah. And guys, that's a tip I can actually give you on fishing a buzz bait. Um, if you're noticing they're blowing up on it and they're not getting it good, or they're blowing up on it and they're not getting it, a lot of people are automatically like pick up a spinner bait or something like that. But what I've noticed is you got two different kinds of buzz baits. You got your kind of like more compact, normally they're head knocker or short arm buzz baits, and then you got your longer arm buzz baits. Well, what I do is when they're not eating that short arm buzz bait good, that more compact buzz bait. I switch out to your like standard just long arm buzz bait and that's what I switched out to today and that's kind of made the difference in getting bites and not getting bites for me and then the second thing is is right now we're pre-front um, it's still very very warm especially for the second week of October you know normally sweatshirt sweatpants by now I mean it's cold you know we're looking at the first frost and that's not happened here in East Tennessee and so this water really hasn't cooled down to a point where these fish have to eat they're just kind of up here and you know they're running through things and not just really eating super well and see josh was having trouble actually catching these fish you know a lot of like blowing up on it missing it or just following it and he slowed it down a little bit you know you want that buzz bait to just kind of be boiling right under the surface of the water and oftentimes i found that that really gives those fish that longer arm buzz bait with that sort of retrieve gives those fish the chance that they need to really get a hold of that bait and you put way more fish in the boat so a little tip there just thought process on buzz bait fishing um it's funny i've learned a lot about fishing a buzz bait in the past couple years here used to not be a big buzz bait fisherman but once i kind of figured out the tool it has become something that i've always got tied on so yeah Guys, this is what I call taking my kayak for a walk. It's where you uh, get out of your kayak and walk with it. Because my butt's too heavy from eating all of that Mexican food. We can't navigate this. It is way too shallow too, but uh, that's neither here nor there. But, yeah, gotta take your kayak for a walk sometimes. See, look, no hands. Oh. Golly, I just soaked myself. <laughs> oh. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, get out. Nope, stop, 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 stop. Lord have mercy. No, they don't. Whew. Dude, are you done? Golly.
Okay. I mean, soaked me, came off. You have him? I have the big one, dude. Oh. Oh, my mercy. Uh huh. There we go. Dude, there's one following it. Get you a bait in there. There's one following it. Yo, boys and girls, little buzzbait fish. Beautiful, man. He had one just as big with him. Really? Yep. All right, buddy, we're going to get us a bite right here. Bar off. <laughs> Bar God. This is it right here. This is all we got, son, because right there is where we're taking out. <laughs> Golly, dude, that fish went crazy. Heck yeah. That's a long one, dude. Yeah, dude. Heck yeah. Literally, the ramp is in eye shot there, boys. Little bitty one. But fun. But fun. All right, come up here, dude. Come on. You're good, you're good, you're good. Hell yeah. Woohoo! Shit. I service with a smile right there, buddy. Hell yeah. It's a damn good time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mercy, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do this. I'm so ready for today. So Realistically, this is probably going to be the last river float that we do for the year. I mean, I say that. We'll, we'll do other ones in the winter. We kind of avoid the river floats in the winter because they're hard, a lot more current. But today's the last day that we're going to see like 60 degree temperatures. After today, we're dropping down into lows in the 20s and highs in the 40s. I mean, winter is definitely here. But me and Josh have come out here today. We're about to send it. We're going to send it hard because... I mean, really, I think these fish are going to munch because not only do we got good current flow, but we've also got this low pressure moving in that's bringing all this rain, bringing all this cold weather. So we got a swirling low pressure. We got some rain moving in. We got the perfect amount of current. Overcast skies. I mean, dude, I ha well, here's the problem. I hate like talking it up before yeah. we get out here because then we always suck. But all I'm saying is, is if you were reading Bassmaster magazine, these are all the things that it says that you need to catch fish and so we've been over here on these rivers enough that when you see this you see the weather you see that flow you get that feeling and you just you know you know what's about to happen and i, I think today is one of those days i all think right. it's about to happen. all right ladies and gentlemen you heard the man let's send it let's see what happens probably last river float of the year oh hell yeah man <laughs> Alrighty then. Oh, I'm ready. I am ready. I am so ready. You just don't even understand. The current is damn near perfect. They ought to be eating. This, oh, I'm super excited about today. Man, I'm excited to be out here. I love it. I love this. I really do. I love being on rivers. I love fishing in the current. I mean, this is definitely, I would say for me, this is like probably my forte like there's not very many things alex rudd is good at but alex rudd can fish some current for some small mouth and some spots and i absolutely love it so i'm gonna try to smoke them today boys and girls i'm gonna try to smoke them today see what happens i'm excited see if we can get one of these big old brown girls to eat this here old slobby knocky
Josh. Josh, freaking giant, buddy. Really? Giant. There's a 20. Golly, dude. Let me tell you something. Now, that fish didn't play around with it. <laughs> well, maybe. That Not... one mouth punched it. Yeah, that one mouth punched it. That's Josh's new phrase he's trademarking, mouth punch. There you go, guys. That's a daggum good one. A good one what do you think i don't know if it's 20. Nah. he's probably he's probably maybe 18 19 and some change you got your board with you let's 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 check our eyes real quick yeah yeah let's get our eyes right and see what this thing what this thing actually is i'm gonna say she's 18 and a half all right let's see let's see what she goes come here baby cover your eyes up 18 and a half. Eight, 18 and a half, yeah. 18 and a half. Hey, that's how you start it off. 18 and a half inches to start out the day. That ain't too bad, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, baby girl. Heck yeah. Boy, the thing about it is, you set the hook on those things. You can toss it. And, uh, I mean, they just, there's no dude, gift, dude. They no, just... like, God, I thought she was huge. I mean, because she goes, she goes, bop, whoa. And I was like, uh oh. I think I'm gonna shoot across the other side. I think current's current's a little bit more over here. I think I'm gonna shoot across the other side. I don't know, I just like the way this current's laying over here a little bit better, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was cool, man. Not a very big one, but I watched that thing disappear. I was reeling it back and watched him disappear. That's cool. God, look at his eyes, how red they are. That is crazy. Wow. One? No, I got him. Oh. Little bitty, but dude, look at his eyes, man, are like, I mean, like ruby red. They look like fire, dude. That is crazy. God, that's so beautiful. Thanks, bud. There it is. Oh, stay on there. God, it about took the rod out of my hand. It's all, it's those damn greasy hands from that uh, biscuit. <laughs> oh God, that's a good one. That might be an 18. First one, guys. See what it goes. Look at there. Oh God. Paste him off. Paste him off. See what he goes. Number one. God, he's mad. Seventeen and a half. Seventeen. Seventeen and a half. Number one. There we go. Thanks, bud. It literally almost pulled the rod out of my hand when it dove beside the kayak. Crazy. Bing, bang, boom. Baby Pachyderm. Listen, look at that old boy. I mean, hell, he wouldn't help you none in a boat tournament, but a kayak tournament. I mean, he's long and skinny. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bing, bong, boom. Hell yeah, that was a good little bite. I never felt him. <laughs> he just loaded up on it. All right, guys, we're gonna pick up this big old topwater for just a second. It's a freaking uh, 
Magnum. Magnum top water is what that is. It's uh, one of them big big ones. I'm gonna throw this thing around for a minute. Just see. Just see what happens. I mean, I don't know if something comes unplugged on it, it's gonna be a freaking giant. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, hell, I say that as aggressive as these fish are, it could probably be a 15 incher. But I don't want to see. I want to see. But I guess, I mean, that's. Oh, dude, giant. And, or just talk. Dude, this fish is strong. Do you see this fish dogging me right now? He's, I mean, he's dogging me. It's not even that big. He is giving it to me. I'm gonna net him just because. I mean, it's a good fish. God, hey, dude, calm down, just stop. Good lord, that fish. Just now. Come on. He, it's a really good fish, though. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. Oh yeah, dude. Another good one. Have you noticed every fish we've caught today is being dead of a conversation? Yeah. We're just least expecting it, just chit-chatting. He is biting my finger so hard. 18 and a quarter. So we got a 17 and a half and an 18 and a quarter. I tell you what's crazy is how we can see we fish go. from that far away and know how and big tell. they are. Yeah. That's a pretty one, buddy. Dude, we've caught more fish than most people we'll ever do. Yeah. 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 There we go, guys. Look at that Dude, house look up at there. The mouth on that thing. Dude, it bit down on my hand and him and his. Dude, that's a beautiful his, fish. Uh, their teeth get a hold yeah. of your fingernails. It's yeah. like sandpaper. Anyways, that's there we go, gorgeous. guys. Job, beautiful, man. beautiful fish. That's what we come over here for, right there. Oh, Burn, Hell, that's a potted, that's a potted plant. <laughs> I mean, god dang, that is a potted plant. I mean, dude, that is a full, look at this. Like full burn, dude. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, dude, that'd be people give good money for that at the Walmart. God. <laughs> oh, God. There you go, Josh. That's a good one. Golly, he's dogging me. Heck yeah. Man, I'm telling you, it's just about winning through him. He ain't even really that good of a fish. He's just dogging, dude. Got a whole damn tree. Look at that, guys. That's a pretty fish, man. I mean, gorgeous. That's awesome. Thanks, bud. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to get shot at, rained on, potentially run over, you name it, we've done it. We've been there and got the t-shirt. There we go. A little large mouth. Yep. Yep. John caught one right here the other day too. Hi. Hello. Hello. Are you there? <laughs> God. Well, boys and girls, this is service with a smile. If I do say. Josh has got the motor running. We're uh, we're out here just doing it. It's raining, it's crappy, it's cold, but 
we probably got about two more miles left in this flow. We're just kind of buzzing through some dead water where we don't normally catch fish. Getting down here back on a little bit deeper water, a little bit more current, and we're gonna finish this thing out. But Josh, what's your thoughts, bud? It's crazy how this river works. You come over one day, put 95, 96 inches on the board, and you come over like today, and you know, the bites have been quality. There's just been few, so yeah. Definitely different than the last trip, but I'll do it again tomorrow if Alex wants to. I don't know if we will do it tomorrow. Nah, I think the nah. I think the high tomorrow is 41. I was hoping you wouldn't take me up on yeah, that. Yeah, we're not. We're probably not doing that. But yeah, it is crazy how quickly this river changes. But a lot of it has to do with just current, uh, current flow. You know, whether the sun's shining or not. You know, but you know, I would figure with this front moving through, that these fish would be munching, and they're just not munching that great. But we're about to hit some more current here. We're about to drop in elevation again and uh we're about to get back after and hopefully catch some fish but a little midday update got us a little snack josh has got us on a little uh motor action here and we're gonna send it you come here you got look at that right there i could not do that again if i tried i mean look at that i mean how do you pin that there like that? All right, now you come here, you bat. No, I couldn't. And here's the deal. If I didn't want to hook that net, I, I, would, I would hook that thing 42 times just then. God, play buff. All right. All good. Let's see how long that one is, really quick, and then we'll pull it back and try to get another one. Eighteen and a quarter. Eighteen and a quarter. That's a good one. That's a good one. Heck yeah. Little B dude. Fun though, thank you, man. That's funny. <laughs> There's some grass right here on the back side of that island and they sit down in that grass. It's exactly where that fish was sitting was right in that grass bed. That's funny. It's good healthy river grass, man. That's what a lot of these fish are orienting to is either river grass or rock. And you know, a lot of what we fish up the river is a lot of rock. And then you get down here, you get more of that river grass. It's uh it's funny. I don't I don't really understand it to be totally honest with you why. You know they sit or why that river grass grows in certain places and not others but it just does this is funny that that fish sits right in that river grass john what are we doing going for big fish you going pb hunting today yeah throwing big baits just big all baits. day five, five six miles of river floating going for a pb which is weird because John normally throws things that are about <laughs> that big and today he's deciding to throw things that are that big right there. So we will definitely see what's going to happen. I don't know. Let's go PB hunting. You ready? I really, I broke mine last year this, this time. You broke yours a couple Literally, weeks ago. three so weeks ago. It's time for another one. 
Send it, bud. Just like swimming off in this super clear water. That'd be sick. Okay, we're in. We did it. We have no current flow on the dam until probably 10 o'clock today. So we get an extra hour with no current. And so we're gonna spend some time um, actually go up towards the dam here, fish near the dam wall, right below the dam. And then once they turn that current on, we will start the float. But kind of cool scenario here where we get that extra hour of no current to maybe have the potential of uh, catching some fish up below this dam, which is a fun prospect to say the least. But we're about to get after it. I'm gonna start with the buzz bait today. I brought a buzz bait and a jerk bait. Jerk bait isn't something I really throw in the river a whole, whole lot really in any river but i figured it'd be something that would work so i'm gonna be interested to see if it does so yeah that's what we're doing we're gonna make our way up here this little current scene make our way up here this dam and fish for a little while and we're gonna start the float Thought she's going head hunting, John. Huh? Thought she's going head hunting. You can put that damn spinner rod down. So, guys, I've been sitting here waiting for them to turn the current on. Uh, like I said, they weren't going to turn it on until 10 o'clock. It's just amazing to watch up that little river channel there as that current starts to get stronger and as they start to push water out of that dam, how that river starts to come to life. You know, there was zero movement glass calm. And now you're just starting to see these little pops, fish being eaten, bait fish being chased. These fish are so dictated by river current. Their entire life is dictated by the movement of this water. And it's just amazing to see how the movement of water totally changes the way that they act and interact with their environment, which is just, I don't know, it's cool to just sit here patiently and watch this. You know, a lot of times we come out here and we fish and we move, 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 move. But sometimes you just got to be patient, sit, watch, almost like a hunter, waiting for the right moment. And when that moment arrives, that's when you really start laying the wood to them. But it's just cool to see that river start coming to life like that. But I saw, I didn't see any big ones, but I saw a pack of like, uh, like five or six of like two or three pounders. Yeah. Look at this. Dude, already. How crazy is that, that that current positions in fish like that? That's a good one, too. Yeah. That is freaking I is this telling you guys you don't understand this is why I preach current 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 and current these fish's lives are dictated by this stuff man I'm telling you that's crazy golly I mean what's crazy is how that fish wasn't sitting there four minutes ago yeah you've already gone through that area yeah there we go. There you go, guys. Literally, what time is it? Let's. See, I'm gonna prove this to you guys. So it is 10:07. Literally, that fish was not sitting there seven minutes ago. That current got turned on, and that fish is sitting there. That is just so cool to see that happen. Thanks, buddy. Heck yeah. When you think about current, there's a bunch of different types of current. There's man-made. There's natural. There's wind-driven. You know, there's funneled current because there can be an area where the water funnels down. It just creates a natural, you know, current area. It's like in between these two bridge pillars. Even though there's current pushing through them from this dam, if the wind was blowing through here or it bottlenecks down through here and there's any sort of water movement, that's current. Those fish use that current. And I'm telling you, my dad used to say it all the time. I'll preach it to my kids. The three most important things in bass fishing are current, current, and current. There we go. Oh God, he's freaking out. Look at him running towards me. Oh yeah, he's pissed. That's a good one too. Oh, that's a large mouth, dude. Yeah, that's a green fish. Nice. <laughs> I thought he ate it kind of soft. No wonder, it's a green fish. Yeah, he just kind of come up and goes boop. That's funny how they, the difference in the way they eat stuff, man. And largemouth just kind of bloop it under them. Them spots, they want to kill it with everything they got in them. That's funny. Look at this. Get out of there. 
I was hugging a tree and everything. Oh man, that's fun. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Little bitty dude. Thanks, buddy. Heck yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay, okay, okay. That's just too much fun. I don't care what anybody says. It's too much fun. There's another one. Oh, God. Dude, they're going nuts today. I mean... Um, I mean, Lord have mercy. There's another little one. There you go, guys. Well, guys, there you go. I'm putting timestamps on each one of those catches just to show you how quickly it can turn around when the current gets turned on. That literally was about a 150 yard section of bank that I caught every single one of those fish on. And it's just amazing how just these fish's lives are dictated by this current. And even though they may have been sitting there, I could have fished a buzz bait over their head, they just aren't gonna eat it. But when that current starts hitting them in the face, it just, just does something to them. I think a lot of it probably is it gets the bait stirred up, number one, so it gets them in that kind of feeding mode. And then number two, is that water starts to move, you're getting a lot of really oxygenated water. And I think as those fish start to just breathe that really oxygenated, cool water, it's just like a shock to their system, you know, and they absolutely get cranking and get ready to rock and roll. It's just like us, you know, you watch these athletes or whoever, they'll take a shot of oxygen on the sideline to kind of rejuvenate themselves. I think those fish are very, very similar. And so when that current hit them, they were ready to rock and roll. And so, I don't know, it's just cool to see. It's cool to see this, everything that I talk about, you know, I preach current, 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 see all that kind of just play together right there in that one little moment and be able to catch those fish on that buzz bait. But we're gonna keep the buzz bait in our hand for a good little while here. If we get down here to some of these slower sections, I might pick up the jerk bait for just a minute, but if they're gonna eat a buzz bait, it's hard to pry it out of my hand. The sad part about it is though, this will probably be the last time that I get to throw the buzz bait, probably this year. It's about to get really, really cold and stay cold here in East Tennessee. And we're probably about to push right on in to winter we're gonna skip fall like we often do and just go straight into winter so we'll see though but today i've got it today i'm able to catch them on it and that's what we're gonna be doing yeah did you find it no <laughs> i don't know what i laid it on my kayak and i walked a long way i don't i don't know where it is <laughs> i don't I, know dude, where it, ain't, want. it ain't floating down here i've been watching for it i mean it ain't down yeah, here I Okay, I'm just I'm, I'm just gonna sit here and keep trying to watch for it. All right. All right. Well, guys, John has lost his paddle. Um, he is walking, trying to look for it right now. I'm kind of sitting down here, playing defense, making sure it doesn't float down the river past me. I've not seen it yet, but we had to walk a pretty good long ways, and we really don't know what happened or where it went. But John has somehow misplaced his paddle. I don't know how we're gonna make this one work out to be totally honest with you. All right, John, what, do, what we got going on here, buddy? Let's see, he's using the catch board as a paddle right now. The plan is he's gonna tape the catch board to a stick, which honestly, that's pretty, that's pretty like, you know, you got a little bit of uh, ingenuity there. We just got to go up in the woods now and, and find him a stick that he can tape it to. What do you think? That work? Survivor man, John. Have to go into survivor mode. Huh. <laughs> All right, John. It's time to drink our own piss. The sun's going down. We gotta build a fire in a shelter. There you go. A little tape. Tape and a catch board will do. 
Like that'll help me just be able to control myself. Yeah. And it won't break, I don't think. Yeah. I don't want to break it, but... Just really tape that SOB on there. What a, who needs a paddle? Better than a paddle. We're inventing a new kind of Shout paddle. Out, catch board. Let's see how durable these uh, carbonite ones are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh god, this is good. All right, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the maiden voyage here with the new paddle. I gotta watch this. And trust me, guys, I offered him half of my paddle, and he told me no. So, I want to see if this works or not. This is going to be fantastic. Honestly, it works pretty good. I mean, it'll paddle. Give me a little handle to hang on to. I may have to do some more taping. All right, hey. Hey, mission accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. <sighs> so that was exactly what I was talking about. That dude coming behind that thing missed the 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 buzz bait, literally smoked a leaf, and then finally got the buzz bait in his mouth. It's awesome. Thanks, bud. These rocks are crazy. You just look at that, dude. And what's crazy is the water gets up that high. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. There we go. That's a good one. There you go. Heck yeah. See, now that one didn't have no trouble seeing it through the leaves. Because there ain't no gosh dang leaves. Heck yeah. John, John, throw your bait right in there, buddy. There's like three that was with him. God, there's, dude, there's a school of them right there. Oh my word. There you go, guys. Heck yeah. Thanks, bud. Golly. I love the way these things fight, man. Get up in your bud. Thanks, dude. What an awesome bot. Heck yeah, buddy. Hey. Yeah. Bingo. Bing go. That's what I'm talking about. Golly. Looking good. There we go. Heck yeah. Check that one out, guys. That's a good one right there. Heck yeah. That is the kind we are looking for. Whoo, you 
tied up, ain't you, buddy? 18 and a half. Well, actually, 18 and three quarter. Heck yeah. Oh, 18 and three quarter just chunk. That's the way it built right, right there. Pitch with this fish. Well, he's gone. I was taking a picture with him. And he, he left. And my left, I mean, he forcibly jumped out of my hand. But there's just an 18 and three quarter, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man, what a box. I love that so much. I mean, like, here's the deal. I've got, what, 15 bites today? Look at that. Oh, God. Like, I mean, it never gets old. I absolutely love catching them on this buzzbait, man. I think I just like catching fish, period. But there's something about top water. Just top water. I, I love fishing top water. It's like the one thing that I take a lot of time and effort and pride into being really good at is fishing top water just because I love it freaking so much. Oh, look. Ooh. <laughs> That's funny, man. Oh, he got it too, buddy. I mean, I think he wanted it. That's awesome. What a fun bite. Thanks, bud. Well guys, that's it. Probably be the last chance that I get to throw the old buzz bait this year and yeah. Kinda sad. To be totally honest with you. Kinda makes me a little sad, but it's gotta go. Gotta send it. It's time for change. It's fall of the year. It's gonna be winter soon. All the thoughts. Bye bud. Well, boys and girls, it's MD time. If you guys don't know what MD is, you need to uh, click this video that's popping up right here. Go watch it. It's worth the uh, watch for sure to find out what MD is. But as always, you guys are sweet, and thank you for watching.